If you've followed RM Transit for a while, you'll know that I love High Speed Rail, and for our 10th episode of High Speed Rail Explained, we have a very special country, South Korea, with its KTX or Korea Train Express High Speed Train Services. South Korea manages to be, despite not being famous for it, a real high-speed rail powerhouse, with lots of history, interesting oddities, and big plans, as well as being the only nation with a high-speed rail-themed zombie movie. So without further ado, let's hop on board and take a closer look. Welcome to RM Transit, a YouTube channel about the world's high-speed rail networks. If you enjoy the video, please consider supporting my channel on Patreon and subscribing. South Korea is a fairly large country in East Asia, with just over 51 million residents, and the country is highly urbanized. As you can see in my video about the urban railways of Seoul, the nation's capital, which is home to more than 50% of the country's population, in its greater region located in the far northwest. Seoul is surrounded by other major centers like Incheon and Suwon, and its primacy shapes the Korean high-speed rail system, which is naturally highly centered on the country's largest city. Korea, however, is not an easy place to build high-speed rail, being an extremely mountainous place, with some of the largest centers in the country, like Daejeon in Central Korea and Daegu, Busan, and Ulsan in the southeast, all being surrounded and hemmed in by mountains. It's only really to the west and southwest of the country where broader valleys appear, playing host to larger settlements like Gwangju and Mokpo. Now, the trains used on South Korea's high-speed rail network, which first commenced operations in 2004 after over a decade of works, are really interesting, because the original KTX-I rolling stock is quite clearly a modified TGV Rizzo, albeit with a total of 20 cars similar to the Eurostar Class 373, including locomotives at either end and one powered bogey on the passenger coaches adjacent to each locomotive. The initial trains were naturally manufactured by Alstom, but pretty quickly production was shifted over to Hyundai Rotom for domestic production. Later in the 2000s, a new series of trains developed by Rotom, but again based on the locomotive and articulated coach design seen on TGVs was introduced, known as the KTX Sanchon. These trains have a design speed of 330 km per hour and a shorter 10-car configuration that allowed for more flexibility, by coupling two trains together for a longer and more powerful train. Much more recently, in 2021, the KTX Eum, another domestic train model, was introduced, with technology derived from the HEMU 430X experimental train that Rotom built and tested at over 420 km per hour. The Eum is an electric multiple unit model which reflects Korea's transition, along with most of the rest of the world, away from locomotive-driven trains for high-speed services. The Eum sets each have six cars and a top speed of 260 km per hour, making them well suited to upgraded lines where 300 km per hour top speeds aren't needed, and the extra acceleration provided by EMUs can be useful moving from slower lines onto the upgraded segments. The existing Korean high-speed network largely consists of two main corridors. The Gyeongbu high-speed rail line is the country's first, and it parallels the conventional Gyeongbu line from Seoul south to Ulsan and Busan, coming together as several high-speed segments with conventional tracks through Daejeon and Daegu, naturally more like high-speed rail in Europe than in Japan or China. The second line is the Honam high-speed rail line, which runs parallel to the conventional Honam line from Daejeon to Gwangju as a branch to the country's southwest with lower speed through service to Mokpo. Both of these high-speed lines see trains run at up to 305 km per hour, though their geometry allows for speeds of up to 320 km per hour. The entirety of the Korean high-speed rail system is unsurprisingly standard gauge, uses 25kV AC overhead lines, and actually also the European train control system for signaling. What's good about Korea as a model for other places is that the high-speed lines, although not without their problems, have been built quite affordably in spite of tons of tunnels and bridges needed to deal with the country's difficult geography. They've also been built out to quite internationalized standards. Within Seoul, high-speed services call at three stations, Seoul Station, Yongsan, and Yongdongpo, which you may recall are all on Seoul Subway Line 1. And as it turns out, works are actually already underway to remove high-speed services from the urban tracks with them being undergrounded in the next few years. In addition, a limited number of services actually also serve Hangshan to the northwest of the city, which similar to some situations on the Seoul subway acts as a compensation for the presence of a huge yard for high-speed trains here. 
However, since these stations and corridor are somewhat to the west of the massive Seoul metropolitan area, and because at one point the Honam High Speed Line was planned as its own entirely separate high speed corridor from Seoul, a second high speed corridor into Seoul, this time purpose built and dedicated to high speed trains, was planned. And in 2016, this opened in a modified form as a 60 km northern branch on the Gyeongbu High Speed Line to Suseo in southeastern Seoul, close to places like Gangnam, Samsung, Latte World, and the Olympic Park. And interestingly, services into Suseo are not KTX services run by Corel, but instead SRT services run by the Crown SR Corporation, spurring some competition in the Korean high-speed rail market akin to Italo and Trenitalia in Italy. That being said, unlike in the Italian situation, SR is not an open access operator, and its parent company is actually Corel, so the amount of competition that really might happen seems more dubious. Those extra tracks into Seoul will also be getting even more use in coming years, as Seoul's new High Speed GTX or Great Train Express network will utilize the high speed line into Suseo, but not the current Suseo station platforms for the southern section of the A line. Now, on top of the two main high speed rail corridors, there are actually a large number of other corridors with upgraded or newly constructed higher speed infrastructure where trains can run at up to 250 km per hour. The most notable of these lines are probably the Chunggang and Kyonggang lines, which run from Seoul to the southeast and east respectively, allowing connections to Gangnang on the east coast and Andong in central Korea. The Kyonggang line in particular received lots of improvements in the lead up to the 2018 Winter Olympics, when there were direct high speed services from Seoul but also Incheon Airport, a service which was later curtailed due to low demand. There are also semi-high-speed branches off of both the Honam and Kongbu high-speed rail lines with the Jiola line that runs off the Honam high-speed railway south from Iksan to Jeonju, Suncheon and Yosu, and the Donghae line from Kyongbu to Pohang. A relatively new high-speed corridor which branches from the western section of the Kyonggang line currently disconnected from the eastern lake through Pyeongchang is the Jungbung Nairuk line, which runs through the center of the country, and that leads us into lines currently being planned and built. For one, the Jungbung Nairuk line is meant to eventually be extended to Gimcheonggumi on the Kyongbu line, with a future Nambu Nairuk line from there heading to the south coast. The trunk of this line, the Kyonggang line, will also be connected to Suseo Station, and with its eastern half through Pyeongchang to the coast, allowing for far more services to operate. Work is also underway to extend the Jungang line from Andong to Gyeongju, creating a second, albeit lower speed route from Seoul to Busan. On the west coast, the Siohe line, which is currently a mostly urban corridor in the west of Seoul, is meant to be extended further south as a semi-high-speed rail line that might someday connect with the Honam corridor, further expanding the capacity of the high-speed network. Meanwhile in the country's northeast, construction is going on to extend the Gyeongchun line to the east coast as a 250 km per hour high-speed corridor. On the 300 km per hour side, the Honam high-speed line will get another segment traveling to Mokpo, speeding up trips to that city, and there's also probably the potential for the SRT corridor into Suseo Station to be extended to other locales to Seoul's east and north. At the same time, the line from Pyeongtak, where the original KTX and SRT corridors meet to Osong, where the Honam and Gyeongbu high-speed lines diverge, will be quad-tracked, to expand capacity in the core of the network, providing two dedicated tracks to each corridor in the south all the way to Seoul, with new tracks added underground, while speeds are also upgraded to potentially allow service of up to 400 km per hour. There are of course also many possible new stations, which could be opened up in Greater Seoul with the GTX and new core rail lines like the Suen Bundang and Siohe lines being urban lines, constructed with the capability of supporting high-speed trains, right down to their platform screen doors, and core rail already having the experience running services on conventional rail lines. There are also new branch spurs being constructed to bring KTX services directly into Incheon and Suwon in the near term. Suffice to say, while high-speed rail in Korea is already super successful, the future is even brighter.